Do you recognize this device? This is a pacemaker. One person on 600 wears one. Anyone in the audience has one? Pacemakers treat patients with uh, problems in their heartbeat. Pacemakers are probably the most familiar of the large class of implanted medical devices. In this family, you also find brain stimulators, for instance, for Parkinson's disease, or insulin pumps for diabetes. Pacemakers are a wonderful concentration of high technology. They save millions of lives. But this means that millions of patients depend on pacemakers and on their batteries. So you understand that the issue of the lifetime of the battery is really a very important one. Because when you need a pacemaker, I'm sure that you hope to live, to live more than eight to 10 years, which is the lifetime of the battery of a pacemaker. So this means that you hope to have several surgical interventions. And there is no surgical intervention with no risk. For instance, if an infection occurs, since these wires go up to your heart, an infection may be difficult to treat. Not to mention the cost of the intervention, which is about 10,000 euros. Now, this is the newest generation of pacemaker. They are so tiny that they can be installed directly inside your heart. This is great, because you no longer need a surgical intervention. This device can be driven directly up to the heart through a vein. But it may be challenging to retrieve this device when its battery runs out. Besides, I would like to know which version you would prefer between this version of the pacemaker and the previous one. Probably it would be this one, because the size matters here. So you understand that the issue of miniaturization is very important. So this brings us to the two major challenges that patients with heart problems are facing. Firstly, how could we invent a source of power for the pacemaker that would last for the life of the patient? And second, would it be possible to miniaturize the size of a pacemaker? My colleagues and I have been working on these issues for years. And we started by looking at nature. It seems that there is no problem for us to use energy. Probably never you or me will be able to get to the level of power that this sportman is capable to develop. However, I'm moving, so I'm using energy. And although you are sitting, you are also using energy. So how do living organisms, such as you and me, use energy. What is the secret? Popeye has the secret. But spinach, very easy. Well, I hope I do not disappoint you, but as you may know, Popeye is also some sort of liar. So no, although iron plays a role, the real secret of power is glucose, which is a type of sugar that we have almost everywhere in our body. I have taken a big breath. What happened at the cellular level of my muscles, which made it possible for them to move? Well, the oxygen that I inhale is conveyed 
to the cells of my muscles. And there, it is combined with glucose. And this combination is the result of a fantastic chain of chemical reactions. Each of these chemical reactions is made possible by a specific enzyme. You may consider that enzymes are tiny surgical instruments capable of breaking the bonds between the atoms inside molecules and to transfer electrons. And it is during this process of exchange of electrons between one atom and another one, in our case oxygen, that energy is produced. And I would like to stress this point because it will be very useful for the rest of my talk. Energy is produced by the movement of electrons between atoms. But there is no electric wire at the level of molecules. So, although there is a movement of electrons and although there is energy which is produced, there is no electricity. So the question would be, how could we be able to capture these electrons and to use them to perform electricity? The answer to this question is called the glucose biofuel cell. The idea is that instead of combining with a single enzyme, glucose and oxygen, you would be use, using two different enzymes. The blue one captures the electron out of the glucose and gives them to an electric wire. Then they can go to the pacemaker and power the pacemaker. And then one step further, they go to a second enzyme, the red one, where they will be combined with oxygen and protons coming from the bio biological fluids and this results in water. It would be great if it was possible to power a glucose biofuel cell with this principle. This is because, as I said, we have glucose everywhere in our organism. Re regarding oxygen, breathing and circulation disseminate oxygen very efficiently around our organism. And finally, the quantity of glucose that we would need in order to power a pacemaker is just ridiculous with respect to the quantity of glucose that we need for our metabolism. So this idea is a great one, which is not ours, which dates back to decades. Why has it not yet been put in place? The answer is that there are two difficult issues, two major issues, which are biocompatibility and performance. And to make you understand the process which led us to the solution that I will describe in a few minutes, I have to come back 10 years before. At that time, I was working, and for a totally different project, on the idea of burning glucose inside an animal with an enzyme. And so we built a bag inside which we put the enzyme, and the wall of this bag was a semi-permeable membrane. What is a semi-permeable membrane? It is very simple. It is a membrane which has tiny pores so that small molecules can go easily through it, and glucose and oxygen are small molecules, while bigger molecules, such as the enzymes, cannot. And this is good, because if they did, they would trigger an immune reaction from the host. This cannot occur because the enzymes cannot cross the membrane and because the immunity molecules cannot go inside the device. So we tested that, and it worked, and we were very happy. But then, after only a few weeks, we were very disappointed because it was no longer working. What had happened? Well, it's a very well-known phenomenon, which is called inflammation. And I'm sure you experienced it someday. Perhaps you had the horn of a rose inside your finger, and then the reaction is inflammation. It is the natural process 
by which our organisms defend themselves against foreign body by excluding them. So the solution we had to that was to add another surface after our membrane, which is a surgical tissue which has been designed especially to prevent inflammation for vascular surgery procedures. And then the device was able to burn glucose in the animal for months. But when we had this, we realized that we were really very close to a glucose biofuel cell. We just had to get a glucose biofuel cell to use not only one bag, but two bags with two different enzymes and with an electric wires between the two of them and the pacemaker in the middle. So this principle is very simple, but to make the biofuel cell, we also had to find all the elements and to have them fit together. So the solution for that is to use a sort of biocompatible glue. It was not so easy, but we found that ketosan, which is a polymer that you eat when you eat shellfish, was a very good solution for this because it was capable to mix with carbon nanotubes and with the enzymes. Carbon nanotubes are just tiny little electric wires. So you put all this together, you compress them, and this is what you get seen by the microscope. And as you see, you get a dense network, a dense network in which you have the carbon nanofibers, you have the ketosan fibers, and you have the little balls, which are the enzymes. And so this is how the two electrodes of the biofuel cell look like. These are simply two pastiches in which you have all these elements put together. You may recognize the semi-permeable membrane, which is sealed by silicon, and you have an electric wire. So the biofuel cell has these two electrodes packaged inside the surgical tissue I mentioned earlier. You just need to sterilize it, and you are ready for implantation. So this device may look primitive, and we are working to improve it, but it works great. For the first time, it was possible to power a pacemaker with the glucose and the oxygen of an animal. And uh, so at this stage, I think that we have Sort, uh, solve the, the second challenge, which was miniaturization. Because the volume of this biofuel cell is about one-tenth of the volume of the battery of the pacemaker. So this is fantastic for miniaturization. Now, what is it about the lifetime of the system? We should be able to have this system do, uh, last for the life of a patient. We are not at this stage, but we have made great progress because this device was able to work inside an animal and to keep working after more than six months. So at this stage, we are at the situation where we need to collect data in order to be able to make sure that the device will last for a long time and will be completely safe. Up to now, we had not been able to monitor continuously the production of power by this system. So, very recently, our industrial partner has been able to design a system which makes it possible to make these measurements continuously and to send the data wirelessly. So this is fantastic because these experiments are now running and we have the possibility over months and we hope years to get all these data. But we need a lot of data before we can go to a clinical use. And there we had a very good surprise, which was not at all expected. This surprise is that we were contacted by another company which is building electronic chips to monitor the health of animals and to predict events 
such as carving. And what they needed was a reliable source of power, and so they came to us because our glucose biofuel cell is the perfect solution to this. So this is just fantastic because we will be able to collect a large set of data, which is exactly what we need before we can go to clinical use. To conclude, I would like to draw your attention on what, in my opinion, is the most interesting characteristics of this glucose biofuel cell. It is the first device which has been deliberately designed in order to be able to exchange molecules. This concept is radically different from the concept of a pacemaker. A pacemaker is a perfectly sealed device designed to exchange only electric signals. And I would like you to consider that our biofuel cell does not work if the organism does not provide the glucose and the oxygen. But the other way around, the organism does not live if the glucose biofuel cell does not power the pacemaker, right? This is the exact definition of symbiosis. So I think that we can say that this device is the first symbiotic device. And we are, we are working hard to go one step further and to replace, in some situations, our enzymes by living microorganisms or cells in order to develop medical robots capable to compensate for failing functions and these will be really living, implantable medical robots. So in the end, I would like to thank my colleagues from the university and from the uh, industrial partners. Some of their, them are here. It's a real pleasure to work with them because we need an interdisciplinary team here. So thanks to them and thanks to you all for your attention.